Esimene kõneleja on nagu öeldud Joakim Heleenius. Joakim Heleenius, ma võtsin ka mõned sitaadi kõigilt neilt. Joakim on öelnud Eesti meedias järgmist asja. Oleks puhas hullu meelsus hakata Eesti majandussüsteemiga mängima. Kõige rumalam asi, mida keegi võiks ette kujutada, hakata järsku muutma süsteemi, mida haritud ja ärisaktiivsed inimesed imetlevad. Mis jääb järele? Mitte midagi ei jää järele. Seda ütles ta intervjuus Eesti päevalehele. Mitte väga ammu. Ja minul on veel Joakimiga see eelis ja mulle ta meeldib eriti selle pärast, et meil on tema ka oma sala keel. Soo, et Joakim, kom hiit, o du fust aarta nüü. Du kommer vara först och ingen annan förstår vad jag säger till dig just nu. Jättebra. Och du får använda det här då. Okej. Okay. Is this working? Okej. Okay. Well, I'm starting now. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, my business sector is uh, financial services. Uh, we all know what that means. Uh, why is it good for a country to have a, a strong financial services uh, uh, sector? First and foremost, of course, the distribution of capital that is affected by uh, a properly functioning financial services sector is good for the efficiency of the economy. Uh, and to the extent that there are any financial services that can be exported uh, uh, from the country, they really do constitute the highest quality of uh, exports because it's selling pure brain power. There's absolutely nothing else involved. Um, uh, my company's uh, uh, exports, we're basically an exporter of financial services from Estonia. We manage other people's capital, almost exclusively foreign capital, so we are not managing Estonian capital. We attract foreign capital that is managed by us, and we invest this capital uh, partly in Estonia, but also in many other countries. Examples of the sort of uh, exports we do is uh, we sell management services in uh, strange sectors like international agriculture, uh, international property uh, development, corporate investments, and general asset management. Um, to be successful in, uh, in, 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 serv in, in exporting financial services, uh, you have to have a number of, uh, of attributes. You have to have a number of, uh, of, of strengths at your disposal. Uh, people, communications, credibility, and you have to operate in a business-friendly environment. So uh, let's take these one at a time. Um, people. Clearly, if you look at the world, uh, the most successful uh, financial services sectors are in countries that have very, very strong uh, uh, resources in terms of uh, human uh, capital. Uh, America, Britain, Switzerland, uh, you name it, the sort of countries that you associate with financial services they, are, uh, they have very well-educated uh, um, uh, groups within their population that have been operating in financial services for decades. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of depth in the, in, the, uh, in the experience and the expertise levels in the various subsectors of financial services that any operator, any, any entrepreneur in financial services can draw on. Uh, anybody operating in other countries clearly has more of a challenge uh, on the people front. Communications. Uh, uh, you can't sell uh, financial services, you can't really sell anything unless you have good telecommunications, unless you can get to and from the country where you're based easily. Uh, uh, I think that is pretty clear. Credibility. Uh, financial services is very much a business of credibility. If you don't have, if you imagine trying to, you know, if somebody visits you from North Korea and wants to sell you financial services, you probably wouldn't take that, uh, that visit very seriously. You have to be credible. You have to have a credible organization, and you have to operate in a country and, and, and sell those services from a country that has credibility. Uh, you have to have a business-friendly environment. Uh, you, you cannot operate, uh, as a, again, to take the example of North Korea, in a country that doesn't, doesn't provide a, a friendly environment. So, um, what is the situation in, in Estonia on the people front? There's a big problem. Estonia has a vast shortage of... Uh, of properly educated uh, um, uh, and experienced people in the financial services uh, sector, especially when it comes to uh, exporting these services. Uh, um, we have a big, big problem here. We find it difficult to, to hire people here, uh, and when it comes to hiring new people from, uh, from universities, 
we actually have a big problem. In spite of Muddy showing that was it 36% of Estonians study business, we are incapable of finding anybody who can live up to our standards of expectations. We hire our people almost exclusively from SSE Riga and from international universities. We find it impossible to find uh, graduates from Estonian universities who meet our standards. Um, communications, uh, Estonia has some of the best telecommunications in the world. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, Skype was a good example that we saw just recently. Uh, uh, transport communications, of course, are a little bit more, uh, more challenging. Uh, uh, hopefully, over coming uh, coming uh, years, uh, this will this will improve. Um, credibility. Estonia has a credibility uh, uh, problem. In spite of all the good news coming out of Estonia, the problem is that hardly ever anybody out there in the wider world has heard of Estonia. Uh, it's simply we have a problem. It's too small. And when people hear about Estonia, they tend to associate Estonia with something. And unfortunately, being associated with Eastern Europe, with the former Soviet Union, even with the Baltics, is not, is not really good for business. It doesn't add to the credibility of somebody like us trying to sell financial services out of Estonia. Our business-friendly environment is a big, big plus. Uh, uh, if it wasn't for the fact that Estonia is so small, I'm sure the Financial Times uh, would be writing about the, uh, the fantastic, uh, fantastically uh, uh, foresightful uh, and good economic decisions that have been taken by the Estonian government and, and continue to be taken by the Estonian government. I think this is one of our biggest strengths in Estonia. Very good government. Um, my recommendations, education. Uh, there is a problem. The, uh, the, education, the, the, the primary education in Estonia works. It's good. Uh, PISA studies show that Estonia consistently comes in very high. However, the secondary education is a problem. Something needs to be done about this. Uh, uh, the Estonian universities are dumbing down. The best Estonian students are going abroad to study because they are not challenged in Estonia. Uh, the, the people studying in Estonia are being taught to a level that is not up to the sort of standards that, for example, companies like mine need in order to, to hire them when they graduate from university. Something seriously needs to be done about this. Uh, it's, not only financial, it's not only the business sector, it's other sectors as well. Unfortunately, if there isn't enough uh, expertise uh, in a country, you need to attract the expertise if you want your high-value businesses to grow. We need to make it easier to hire foreign experts. Uh, a lot of proposals are in, in, in the pipeline, such as limiting a cap on, on social uh, uh, payments and so forth. Uh, we need to make it easy for these people to live in Estonia, find schools, whatever, English language schools, maybe Finnish, Swedish language schools to attract these people. Do something about make Estonia part of Scandinavia, the Nordic countries. Thank you very much, Thank Joachim. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody understood that as soon as you get a little bit critical, you get your medal. <laughs> thank you. And thank you very much. Thank you. But we uh, will expect you to be back here on the stage after the panel and, and answer questions.